Hey guys, I've been asked the question, what makes someone a heretic? Notice how I'm doing the air quotes around the word heretic? Well, this question is actually very easy and very, very hard to answer at the same time. The problem with making it so difficult to answer is the definition of heresy. You see, every faith group out there has a different idea of what orthodoxy is. That word orthodoxy just means right beliefs. And every faith group out there, because they have their own idea of orthodoxy, they naturally have their own definition of heresy, which means wrong beliefs. Listen, some beliefs out there are pretty minor. They're no big deal. They may not be exactly what your faith tradition, your group believes. Notice that I'm trying really hard to avoid the word denomination here. I'm not really a big fan of the word denomination, but denominations do help categorize beliefs for people. I'm really talking about what the people from your tribe or from your group really believe. I like to think about beliefs in one of three categories, and I think about these categories in relation to how big of a deal this belief is. Some beliefs are minor, it's not that big of a deal. I think about this like the difference between your house and your neighbor's house on the same city street. Look, we're really close to one another. I live in one house, you live in another house, but basically almost everything about where we live is the same, except for maybe the color of the house and the street number. Those beliefs are pretty close. And because they're pretty close, they're genuinely not considered heresy. Some beliefs, however, are not on the same street anymore. Now I'm in one city, you're in a different city. The cities are in the same region, the same part of the country. The cities are, generally speaking, experiencing the same weather and the same climate and the same terrain. But one city thinks and acts a little bit different than another city. Okay, now you're starting to ask the question, do beliefs that are different cities, are they heresy? Well, probably not. You see, I'm here in my faith group on the issue of, let's just take a random topic, baptism. And I think you have to dunk somebody all the way under the water to be baptized, if possible. There's another faith group out there that says, hey, baptism is a really big deal to us. We're talking about the same thing right now, but we don't care if you're dunked under the water, or if somebody sprinkles something over your head, just that there's water involved and that water has a symbolic as well as a very deep spiritual meaning. You see, we're in two different cities here. We're talking about the same thing, but we're coming at it from two different angles. That's not technically heresy. However, there are some beliefs, and now we start to talk about heresy. We're not on the same city block anymore. We're not even in the same city anymore. We're actually not even in the same country, and you can't call yourself, here's where I'm going with this, a Christian if you hold to those beliefs. You may be surprised to hear there are very few beliefs that are so far removed from from the rest of Orthodox Christianity, I'm not trying to impress you with my big words, but I just need you to understand where I'm going with this. There are very few, but there are some beliefs that are so far removed, you can't call that Christianity anymore. And if you're asking yourself, well, what are some of those beliefs? Well, the people that deny that Jesus literally was God made into flesh, that's not Christianity anymore. That's heresy. The people that say Jesus and Jesus' mother Mary had a sexual relationship with God and Jesus is the physical result of a sexual relationship. That's not Orthodox Christianity. That is heresy. Because Orthodox Christians, the rest of us believe Jesus came from a virgin birth, meaning God did a miracle and put a baby in the womb of a woman that had never had sex before. There are a few other beliefs out there. The physical death and the, the actual death and the physical resurrection of Jesus, if you don't hold to those views, 
You're just not Christian. And that and any other view would be heresy. The idea that Jesus and Satan are equal with one another and they're both sons of God and they're fighting one another and one of these days maybe Jesus will be able to beat Satan in an arm wrestling competition, that's actually heresy because you're elevating Satan to deity or you're denigrating Jesus to the level of a created being when he is the uncreated, the creator, the, the one that all of creation came to existence from. In fact, the Bible uses this language, that we were all created through him, from him, and for him. You see, there's only a handful of beliefs that are actual heresy, but it depends on where your faith group holds the big tenets of your faith, the big orthodox views of your faith. This is why it's hard to answer. But it's actually pretty easy to answer when you understand that biblical Christianity, what the Bible really teaches, is all about Jesus. It's not about us. And it's not about this world around us. It's about Jesus. And when you get a few things right about Jesus, everything else has to fall into his place. So when you understand the things that the Bible declares about Jesus, everything else is heresy. That's what makes it both easy and hard to spot. What is heresy? Well, it is anything that teaches something different than the Bible says about Jesus, about sin, and about the afterlife. I hope this has been helpful. I'm sure it's raised a whole lot more questions for you, but I hope it's at least answered your question about what is heresy. See you next time.